Hello, I'm Hillary and welcome to my book talk. So in conjunction with the Community Care Access Center of London, the London Public Library has created a book list of 10 books that feature characters who have disabilities or illnesses and their family members. So the aim of this book list is to provide titles that are relatable to families that are using the Community Care Access Center. In addition, these books aim to create a sense of understanding about what it's like to have a disability or to live with someone who has a disability. So the following three titles are an example of what you will find in the book list. So book one, Daniel is in Talking by Marty Lambach, is based on the author's own experience for caring for her child who was diagnosed with autism at a very young age. So in this novel, Lambach crafts an honest and unapologetic view of the hardships that people face when caring for family members with disabilities. Told through the eyes of Melanie Marsh, an American who's living in London, this novel tells the story of Melanie and her husband, who is a British man, attempting to co come to terms with their son's diagnosis um, of autism. So at first, Stephen is in denial about Daniel's condition, that he's different, um, but eventually it becomes very clear when they take him to the doctor. So when the doctor recommends that Daniel be placed in a long-term care facility because he says that his um, autism is incurable and he'll never be able to talk, um, the couple has very different views on what to do. So Stephen at first agrees with this suggestion, thinking that this is the plan. But Melanie believes that one day Daniel could be able to talk. And so she'll stop at nothing and start being consumed with researching different therapies and different doctors that could one day help him become what she calls normal and hopefully talk. So the tension that this brings about um, in their relationship uh, makes the family atmosphere very rocky. Um, but Melanie never refuses to give up on her son, and she feels like she can't. So eventually Melanie finds a doctor um, who has alternative um, ways that could help Daniel talk once again. But her relationship with this new doctor um, starts to push her husband and her family further apart. So this novel follows the ups and downs of Melanie's life following the diagnosis, providing a realistic portrayal about what parents go through um, as their child gets diagnosed with autism, um, but it uses clever human humor and compassion. So since Limbeck has cared for a child with autism, this story is able to provide a realistic, um, realistic story that will make you feel like people understand what you're going through if you are also caring for someone with a disability. So it shows the hard and confusing times, and it shows the struggles that family members go through as they come to terms with the diagnosis and they try to figure out what to do next. So you're looking for a book that focuses more on the family relationship um, than the disability itself. This is a great book for you. So Daniel Isn't Talking is available at the London Public Library, um, only at the Central Branch. Next, we have Best Boy. So in Best Boy, Eli Golby crafts a captivating and fast-paced story about a 50-something-year-old man named Todd Aaron, who has spent the last 40 years of his life living in the Peyton Living Center for People with Disabilities. In contrast to Daniel from the first book, um, this book follows the actual character of Todd, the man who has autism, um, instead of his family. So. The Peyton Living Center is the sixth place in a row that Todd has been placed, but this is the only place that really becomes his forever home. So as the book starts, we get a glimpse of how hard it is for Todd's mother to leave him there. Um, and they both end up crying, and it's very emotional. But as we progress further, we learn more and more about who Todd is. So now, 40 years later, Todd's 50, and he has spent these last years living in the Peyton facility I'm relatively carefree because his mother has now passed and she has left a large estate that allows him to live there without any complications. So Todd spends his days compulsively rereading the encyclopedia that's there. He interacts with the staff and the other residents that he's come to know over the 40 years. And he tries, as his title suggests, to become the best boy, so the most normal he could be without causing any trouble at the home. So, however, eventually, um, Todd gets a new staff member who he instantly disdains because he leaves him to help another patient, and he gets maybe jealous, a little upset, and then he gets a new roommate 
who's suffering from a brain injury and whose just personality really frustrates Todd and gets on his nerves and his whole life in this facility becomes flipped upside down um, and his daily routine is interrupted and he has a hard time dealing with it. So written in the first person, um, we follow the thoughts and actions of Todd as he tries to escape the facility. This begins with him, his es uh, plans to escape and then eventually starts skipping his medication and he attempts to return to his parents' home, a place that he hasn't seen in over 40 years um, and a place that really only exists in his memories and he's not sure where it is. So this novel will allow you to escape into a man who tries so hard to be seen as no normal and wishes so desperately to return home when things start to go uh, wrong for him. So while reading this book, you'll feel like you are transported uh, inside the Peyton Living Center. You'll become familiar with the buildings, the hallways, and the people. And Goldie even puts a map here at the beginning of the novel to help you understand Todd's life as he roams through the facility, all the different buildings, and he tries to go home, which is in this direction. So Best Boy is available at the London Public Libraries, Central, Cherry Hill, Jana, Masonville, and Westmount branches. And finally, um, what would you do if you won 12 million in the lottery? So this is something that Perry must decide in Patricia Wood's lottery. This book I don't have a copy of as it's all checked out right now at the library. So after coming into this fame and fortune of $12 million, um, a number of Perry's family members starts um, popping up back into a life that he hasn't spoken to in a while, thinking that Perry, with his IQ of only 76, would be very easy to manipulate. But these are the same family members that just took away the house that his grandmother, who was his caretaker, had left him after she passed it passed, sorry, only a few months earlier. And on top of this, um, Perry works at a marina, and all of a sudden a bunch of his friends and co-workers that he's worked with for a number of years start to pay him more and more attention than ever before, um, making him start to wonder who can he really trust with this, especially now with this new money. But thankfully, so Perry's late grandmother, who raised him, made him, allowed him to believe in himself, um, taught him that his IQ would not stop him or limit him in any ways. So he becomes very strong through this journey. So in fact, Perry would be the first to tell you that his IQ does not make him retarded um, because he would need a 75 for that. So although he'll keep you guessing throughout this book of oh, what he's going to do with this money, if he'll be able to protect himself, and you become worried and about the intentions of his friends and his family, you can be certain that Perry is a strong character and he will do something that is right for himself and he will not be influenced. But the only trouble is, among all this chaos, can Perry find out who his true friends are because he does have some at the marina that he works at. So Perry is a humorous and lovable character who will leave you wondering at the end of the book what it truly means to be smart. What character is the smartest? Could it be Perry with his IQ of 75? So Wood was inspired to write this book um, based on a family member that had a disability. So she intentionally did not define what Perry has, just that he his IQ is on the lower side at 76. So this makes Perry a very relatable character for many people who have never really fit in, never belonged, and maybe were a little slow. So you are bound to fall in love with Perry. He's humorous and cunning despite everything that people may th think of him. So you really enjoy going on this journey with him uh, and learning as he learns. So Lottery is available at the London Public Library Central and Jana Branches. And for more information on all of these titles and more in our book list, please contact the London Public Library. Bye.